You're not my dad! What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl, Skitten, back at it again. How you doing, husband? <sighs> Mediocre. Okay, no, no, let's mm -hmm. start over. Let's start over, okay? Nobody actually cares, so let's let's do it. Let's do it over. Okay. okay. How you doing, husband? This is where you say good. Good. And then you ask me how I'm doing. Hi, how are you? Are you doing good? I'm doing terrible. <laughs> 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 how are you feeling? <laughs> no, I'm doing good. How are you, my love? Mediocre, but okay. we already went through this. Why are you mediocre? No, no, I feel great. No, tell me. No, tell me. feel good. No, look, look, and tell me. I work on look, the look, internet. Look at me in the face. What's wrong, baby? Yes, are there people that are into this? I feel like puking. Me. I'll throw up in your face right now. It's, <laughs> it's my only defense <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did I say what up, Hope Biscuits? I think I did. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Uh, everyone who keeps checking on us, first of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing well. We appreciate your support and your love. I'm doing mediocre. I'm doing. He's doing mediocre. Yeah. I'm doing mediocre. Mediocre. For being honest. Yeah. yeah it's, it's... You want to you know how we're doing? You want to know how we're doing? Okay. Uh, I said, husband, are you hungry? Because like I could go downstairs and start cooking dinner. And my husband said, no, I ate peas. And I was like, peas? My husband ate an entire bowl of peas. And you're like, hey, what's that sauce in there with the peas? Well, first I ate spaghetti. And then I didn't want to wash the bowl. So I just put peas in it. <laughs> I'm eating peas on top of spaghetti sauce. And meanwhile, I am eating dill pickle flavored popcorn. It sounds, this sounds like we're doing worse than we are. She's not pregnant. This is just depressed eating. So anyways, we're here to watch OSP. <laughs> you want some? No. It's actually pretty good. The last thing I want is a piece of kernel stuck in my tooth before I shoot a video. And then you just see me tonguing at it for like <laughs> 30 minutes. I think not. So we are here to, hold on. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. The powder like got stuck in my throat. Wait. Uh, oh yeah, it did. <laughs> Don't you spit on me. You have a white shirt. We cannot afford to replace that. Oh God, okay. Do not ever follow up dill pickle flavored popcorn with coffee. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely disgusting. We are here to watch Overly Sarcastic Productions. This is their most recent video. It is a, a trope talk called, I was thinking about her. Thinking about me, thinking about us, what we gonna be? Open my eyes. It was only just a dream. This is also Hannah Montana. You know that song! All right. It's not Hannah Montana. You're supposed I to say. I think it was like. Good answer. Nelly or good something. Answer. Good answer. You're supposed to say good answer. No, class. that's not a good answer. This is why I like hanging out with Dr. D more. <laughs> She tells me good answer and claps. The name of this video is All a Dream. Uh, cool, let's do it. Also, if you like Dr. D so much, why don't you go marry her? I basically did. They're the same. We are... I'm just gonna play this video. You are a rude, rude man. I won the battle of the best <laughs> friends. This video was sponsored by World Anvil. And yes, I assure you, this is all very real. Okay. Consuming media always involves a degree of suspension of disbelief. Not much most of the time, but the fact is, when we're consuming a story, we know it's not real. Getting invested is usually a matter of quietly convincing our brain that it's okay that it's not suspension real. We're gonna put the realism yes. on pause for a little and just let ourselves get immersed in the fiction for a bit. Sometimes we might need to crank up the suspension of disbelief a little bit. Like if we notice a plot hole or something just doesn't quite click, we might yes. need to up our suspension levels a little so it doesn't break our immersion. But the fact is, even when we're really invested in a story, on some mm -hmm. level we still know it's not really happening. This partially explains why the all a dream trope is such a notorious minefield. Fucking For context, yeah, the trope too. it was all a dream I'm is a specific kind of plot twist where- Just so you guys know, mm -hmm. it was all a dream is like mine and Chavez's least favorite fucking trope. Have, have you ever- Least favorite. You ever felt the disappointment when you read a whole book, which it, the first part is real, and then at the very end, Mm -hmm. The character wakes up from a dream. Yeah. But you know for a fact it's only the last part. So you yeah. actually just don't have a resolution for the story. It's just very upsetting. Oh, God, I hate you. Die. Yeah. It's not good or fun or great to read. Not to jump the gun, which I might be. I don't know. The only time I personally think it was ever done well okay. was in Breaking Dawn. Okay. 
All when right. they had that whole ass battle scene. And that's because Stephanie Meyer's bitch ass didn't want to write in a fucking battle scene uh -huh. in her book. And she should have. She should have given us the battle that she built up in the first fucking 370 yeah, the, yeah. pages of the book. Is that how many pages are in it? I don't know. That's a good. Like, I don't actually solid know. Solid number. But it was a lot, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wasted a lot of my life for them to not <laughs> even fight. So I feel like they did it really well then, but it has never been good in, like, anything else ever Good in the history of ever. Right. Of life, of existence. Yeah. Every From time I see a show start and it goes, they start hallucinating and then a thing Ugh. happens, I'm just like, I don't care that this is what you wanted. No. No part of me. It's not good. Where in some portion of the events shown in the story are revealed to have been a dream, a hallucination, a simulation, or in some other way unreal. This happens in small ways pretty frequently. Twilight! Anytime a character is shown to be dreaming, it's usually initially <laughs> ambiguous whether or not the events being oh, shown are really happening, that with this good. only being confirmed one way or the other when the character is shown to wake up. But these are individual scenes. The all a dream trope tends to be more of a thing oh, when it's applied to larger parts of a story, like a whole episode of a show or the yeah. bulk of a movie. Now, fundamentally, the all a dream reveal is risky at its most base level because it disrupts the suspension of disbelief. Exactly. It's a dangerous gamble to remind your invested audience that the things they're invested in aren't really happening. They right. know that already. Engaging yeah. with fiction involves kind of a shared pretense, like a social contract that the writer creates a fiction for the audience and the audience takes the fiction at face value. Not yeah. treating it like it's really happening in real life, but emotionally investing in it. Imagining that the plot and characters could be real. Empathizing with the things that happen to them. If the writer then pulls back the curtain and says, surprise you fool, it wasn't real after all. It's a disruption of that unspoken agreement. The audience is taught that they can't trust the story to be internally honest with them. If a story does this too much, writing off too much of its own plot is false, it can end up completely disrupting the audience's ability to take the story at face value, which can yeah. lead to some really bizarre consequences. Like, for instance, fans not actually believing the story when it does plot things they might not like. Sherlock, for instance, used a lot of twists about things not actually really happening, or things being hallucinations or false memories, or oh, scenes happening that. in Sherlock's mind palace, or overall, not actually happening like they were shown on screen. And yeah. I think this unintentionally cultivated a fan mentality where the audience straight up couldn't trust the show to be honest with them. Mm -hmm. This, I think, contributed a lot to the uniquely bizarre reaction to the season four finale, where it was a legitimate theory running around that there must be a secret good fourth Sherlock episode waiting in the wings that the show is going to release later because the actual finale was bad. Like, really bad. Like, I was there. It was bad. But how could the audience trust that it was actually bad when they couldn't even trust what the show was physically showing them? That now, obviously, sense. this is an extreme case, but it's a good place to start because it's a useful cautionary tale, I guess? Creators strive to get the audience invested in their story, but this is a really good example of how overusing this one specific trope can completely disintegrate that investment by just undercutting the audience's ability to suspend their disbelief. The audience already knows it's not real, but they have to trust the story to be honest with them, to construct a coherent fiction for them to become invested in. If right. the author disrupts that fiction by revealing it to be false, it, it's just bad. Tolkien had some thoughts on this too. When specifically discussing fairy tales, he put forward the opinion that no story that was all a dream could qualify as a fairy tale. If a waking writer tells you that his tale is only a thing imagined in his sleep, he cheats yeah. deliberately the primal desire at the heart of fairy, the realization, independent of the conceiving mind, of imagined wonder. So I think this is part of why, as like a kid, I always liked Alice in Wonderland. But I didn't love Alice in Wonderland because, like, at the end of Alice in Wonderland, she, like, wakes up. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, my, like, I liked the fact that she went and she did all this stuff. And then, yeah. like, at the end, like, to have her, like, wake up, I was, like. See, but that's unique between me and you for people who aren't really versed in fantasy. Mm -hmm. When you read a lot of deep, dark fantasy. Yeah. You're totally okay with just weird shit going on, man. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, oh no, this... 100%. They're like, oh, you open it up and the gate starts talking and you look over. It's a man gate. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. There's a yeah. guy who's a gate. I'm cool yep. with this. Other people are like, that's like too far for them to yeah. take it. And it breaks their immersion. So at the end, when it wasn't real, they can more relate to that, you know, than other things. So I, I kind of agree with you on that end. But it, th reading this or like hearing this reminds me like... A lot of people don't really get that deep with it. True. And you talk about Tolkien. Well, what are your ideas on fantasy? Obviously, deep. I have yeah. whole worlds <laughs> that are fantasy, right? So you're asking, and that's what he's going to tell you. I think it should go deeper. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. Also, I just thought of another genre, in which I'm okay with the, it was all a dream thing. Okay. Romance novels. Fine. I love a good sex dream in a romance novel. I think they're top notch. You know, uh, uh, my brother wrote a book. Right. And yes. it's called... Black dreams. Black dreams. Yes. And the whole plot is based on dreams and its relation to dreams. Yeah. And I, that take on it is one that I also enjoy. Can't really talk about it that much because there's people I know that are still reading Spoiler it. Spoiler alert. 
No, 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 no spoilers. Like no spoilers, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Spoilers. But yeah, it is it is a good take on this entire trope. So that's just that. Dreams can be a decent trope. I just like it just has to be done you really do, well. You can't just say it's just all a dream and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Which that's not what the book does. So I like it. Primal desire at the heart of fairy, the realization, independent of the conceiving mind, of imagined wonder. So basically, the all a dream trope is already a tricky beast to handle. While a lot of tropes can help or hurt the story itself, not many tropes actively damage the audience's basic ability to engage with the fiction. At its worst, yeah. the all a dream trope tells the audience that they shouldn't have gotten invested because there was no point. Yeah, there Nothing was no that fucking point. The dream was real, <laughs> and that tells them not to be invested going forward. But this conveniently leads us into a more helpful angle because the all a dream reveal does not have to mean that the events of the dream didn't matter. Now, don't right. get me wrong. Wrong. It is way more common for writers to play it that way. That's and it's not even necessarily bad. If the events of the dream were really unpleasant or sad oh, with like shit. major character deaths and stuff, the all a dream reveal becomes a relief. But broadly, oh, the it was good. all a dream so it didn't matter twist is pretty unpopular and with good reason. It undercuts its own story. But just because it was a dream doesn't mean it didn't matter. And there's a lot of ways for a dream to still matter even post reveal. For okay. one thing, the events of the dream can have a lasting effect on the characters involved. Might have taught them a valuable life lesson or given them a glimpse of a darker, more unpleasant scenario they want to avoid. Oh, like left the, them with lasting the trauma that Christmas needs unpacking Carol. or otherwise had a tangible impact on their character. It's also yeah. possible that the dream might be obscuring something very real and potentially quite high stakes. Like for instance, if the character realizes they're dreaming because they're in the process of actively dying and they need to wake up to fix it. The Justice yeah, League story I do for like the man that who everything actually. is a yeah. unique twist on yeah. this where Superman is trapped in a dream where Krypton mm -hmm. was never destroyed and he has a beautiful family and a quiet, peaceful life. But Aww. he needs to destroy that perfect fantasy and wake up or the supervillain who put him in the dream is going to do very bad I things forgot. to the world. I do like Giving that up that trope. imagined mm -hmm. life and family is an incredibly oh, heroic he, sacrifice that really upsets him. Or in cases like The Matrix, wake up waking up from the ass. dream is a very early step one in the plot, and the entire rest of the story is about navigating a very harsh reality. Some all dream good. twists also leave it kind of ambiguous how unreal the dream actually was. A character might wake up and assume the events were a dream, but little hints might suggest that it was actually at least sort of real, like an item from the dream showing up in real life. This is one variant of the all dream trope, but there's lots of ways to play with it, so we should probably talk about some of them. The most basic version is the plain vanilla all dream reveal, where a character wakes up and realizes the stuff they were experiencing was just a dream. Nothing that happened was real and they're back in their normal life. This is the simplest option and as discussed, it's a heck of a gamble. And a lot of writers don't seem to notice this. The movie <laughs> version of The Wizard of Oz, for instance, changed the plot from the book to make Dorothy's adventure in Oz all a dream because yeah, the creators were like worried their sophisticated 1930s audience didn't want to watch a movie that was a fantasy adventure in another world. Now, it was yeah. obviously much more interesting to make a movie about a girl getting a concussion. The Disney version of <laughs> Peter Pan does the same thing, implying that the kids were dreaming the whole adventure. In both of these cases, the books make it very overt that the fantastical adventure is really actually happening. In Peter Pan, the parents are freaking out about their missing children when they get back, yeah. and while the wonderful yeah, right. Wizard of Oz ends with Dorothy having no way to prove that she went to Oz, it's definitely a real place. Like in one of the sequels, Dorothy and her family end up moving to Oz full time, so they yeah. don't end up homeless after what? the farm is repossessed. For some reason, some writers seem to think that it's safer for them to couch their fantasy works as just dreams rather than having to commit to the bit. It just ends up undercutting the adventure and making the whole thing seem pointless. Yeah, it makes me Taking feel like an existing fantasy and reframing it to be all a dream just betrays a level of insecurity on the part of the adapters, an unwillingness to let their fiction be fantastical. As a contrasting example, Alice in Wonderland really is all a dream in the book too, and it makes sense. The plot is completely nonsensical and follows dream logic. The adventures are fun, but the all a dream reveal doesn't really break the audience's investment because it doesn't really it feel like me. it was happening anyway. Some adaptations will actually change it so Wonderland isn't a dream and is instead a Narnia-style fantastical otherworld, and those versions need to do some heavy lifting to make the original setting even halfway coherent. This ties into the next major variant, maybe a dream. Maybe. Some stories will leave this purposefully ambiguous. The character will wake up and probably assume what happened was a dream, but there will be clues or hints that it was real on some level. This also applies in situations where the character's not dreaming, but they might be experiencing some kind of fantasy or delusion. In some stories with magical realism, it's not clear if the magic is really happening or not, but there's enough evidence to support the it's real interpretation. This is more the realm of fan speculation than it is a narrative trope, but a lot of writers aim to make the fantastical elements deliberately ambiguous. For instance, Pan's Labyrinth into weaves one girl's fantasy no, otherworld with an otherwise brutally so realistic plot, and it's a little unclear if the magic is real or if it's just a wishful delusion from a very unhappy child. Except that if it isn't real, some plot holes open up, like how the main character was able to escape from her locked room if she didn't actually use magic chalk to right. draw a doorway. Yeah. For the record, its director Del Toro says he thinks the magic is real, but it's left ambiguous so the audience can draw their own conclusions. Okay. This ties into all a dream but real in its own way, where it's not ambiguous real that the character was dreaming, but that doesn't mean the things they saw and did weren't real in some way. This has 
does overlap with maybe a dream, but also applies outside of it, like if the character dreams they're interacting with some surreal other world, but it's implied that this other world is more than just their own dream. Neil Gaiman's Sandman series is built on this trope, since the protagonist Morpheus is the personification of dream, and his realm of dreams is very real in its own way. This is also okay. how the all a dream thing works in Over the Garden Wall. Spoiler alert, skip ahead if you're dodging those, but while the protagonists don't initially realize there's anything more to their situation than just being lost in the spooky woods, near the end of the show, yes. Wirt remembers yeah. how they got there and realizes the last thing he remembers before the unknown is narrowly avoiding getting hit by a train and falling into a freezing lake. After he successfully defeats the big bad in the finale, he wakes up moments after falling into the lake and manages to get himself and his brother safely out of the water before oh. they drown. So Huge the unknown spoiler. was basically a very complicated near-death experience, and there's lots of hints throughout the show that the unknown isn't quite real, like how their adventure seems to take several days but the moon never changes its phase. But even after the heroes wake up back in the real okay. world, we're shown how some of the storylines in the unknown resolve and how the characters they met along the way get their happy endings, oh, implying that nice, it's more though. than just a dying dream mm -hmm. or a hallucination. The unknown is, in some sense, its own reality, and it's actually implied to be the afterlife. There's the fact that you can draw a direct line between the plot of Over the Garden Wall and Dante's Inferno, starting with both sets of heroes finding themselves in a dark and spooky Ooh. forest with no further explanation, and continuing That's through nine nice. more episodes that perfectly line up with the nine circles of hell, and how their guide is called Beatrice, and how at one point they need two coins so they can ride a ferry, yes. and if you're really looking for it, one of the characters the boys meet in the unknown is buried in their town's graveyard. It's yeah. what? Yeah, wait, it really is. Watching the like realization dawn on your face yeah. is like so great. <laughs> that is, it is exactly, it is. I am now convinced that it is, which is one of the first times normally I go, eh, right? Normally yeah. I'm an eh guy. No, it fucking is. Because it's a great show as it is. Okay. I've been trying to get you to watch it for years. And you just go, eh, maybe one time we'll find it. At the, you brought it up like once at the I beginning of our relationship. I bought a shirt. That is not trying to get me and to watch the show. every time we talk about it in video, on camera, you ask what the shirt is. I say, the show's great. You should watch it. That, that does, bitch, stop. Wow. It's just so <laughs> much. That does not count as trying to get me to, have you ever sat me down? And put the show on? That's not gonna work anyways. Uh, what do you, it works all the time. That's how I've watched a thousand and one fucking Age of Empires games. Uh, it is a good game. Watch it. Wild. The unknown is clearly some kind of underworld adjacent situation, but it's still left yeah. kind of ambiguous how real it is. Now the twisty version of this trope is the old just kidding it wasn't a dream. This cuts through the ambiguity of the previous versions and confirms this that the questionably real parts of the story were right. totally real and totally happened. This is usually used as a very deliberate fake out. Sometimes the characters will wake up and assume they just had a very vivid dream, only to realize that nope, it was real, have fun with that. This is often used if the just a dream reveal would have actually been a relief, like if something very unpleasant <laughs> just happened. In that case, this is a bit of a knife twist, presenting the possibility of a just kidding and then undercutting it with harsh reality. Which but sometimes things up. get sneakier. A character <laughs> might be tricked or manipulated into believing what happened was just a dream, only to gradually realize the truth and snap back to reality. It's fairly common for a hero in a fantastical adventure to wake up in a painfully boring and mundane world, convinced that the whole fantasy adventure was just wishful thinking or an overactive imagination, making it look like the story is setting up for the mother of all disappointing only a dream reveals, only to learn that this reality is actually minute. the false one, often being maintained by some dream weaving villain or other hallucination inducing antagonist force keeping them in the dream and out of commission. Bonus points if their fantastical friends and or love interest manage to break them out of it. And a fairly nasty variant of this trope is the dying dream, where not only is the adventure revealed to have been just a dream, but the wow. character having that dream was also dying the whole time. We touched on this with Over the Garden Wall, but it's not uncommon for the character to realize they're dying before they wake up, and waking right. up might become the wind condition they need to actually survive. Of course, this is probably the nicest way to do this subtrope. It's a lot more common for this reveal to be a double whammy of disappointment. Not only was the adventure not real, but the character we got invested in was dying the whole time and is usually dead by the end of the story. You yeah. thought it was something cool, but it was actually a tragedy and you didn't even know Boom. it. Great. Yeah. This is also a twisty fake out trope, but it's kind of the exact opposite of the just kidding variant. An occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge is basically the archetypical example of this trope, and it kind of works because that's all that story Not is. It's a very either. short story that starts with the POV character being executed and ends with him being dead, and everything between is a <laughs> surreal escapist scenario where he miraculously escapes and runs home. Well, we don't really have any outside like context for the POV character, so while it's twisty, and a solid example of writing, it's not as actively frustrating as it would be if we'd already gotten invested in this character. Right, this trope is less popular in writing than it is in fan theories, because frankly, it is the easiest he's, fan theory in the world. You can take any story and claim that it's just a fantasy some character is making up, because every story is a fantasy some writer is making up, and if you want to make sure the fan theory has no loose ends, just That's add good. that the POV True. character is also dying. It makes it edgy and sad, and completely undercuts all the joy in the original story by framing it as a tragic delusion, a last gasp from a dying like brain. Anything positive yeah 
impressive or cool or compelling in the story just becomes sadder from this perspective. Oh man, they must have really wanted to be happy to imagine something like that. How depressing. I think this is why this variant is comparatively a lot less popular than the rest. All the dreams sucks. can be melancholy sometimes, but it's rarely crushingly depressing, really and the happy good. parts of the story still have value just by virtue of making the character happy, even if they weren't real. The dying dream variant typically undercuts that. Not always, though. There's ways to do it that are emotionally impactful without being pointless. The character managing to survive is one way to do this, but some stories will also give the dying character some kind of catharsis or closure through the dream sequence to make the concept more bittersweet than just plain depressing. Okay. I think this trope is very deceptive. I don't just mean that it's like a twist that messes with the audience, I think it's deceptive for writers. It looks so easy. It lets you write whatever you want, break the status quo however you want, and then retroactively delegitimize your own story breaking by saying it was all yeah. a dream. The well, audience still saw it, the yeah. characters still experienced it, but now you're not responsible for making it real in your story. But it almost never has the intended impact. Most people don't write all a dream stories because they're aiming to thoroughly disappoint their audience, and most don't even consider that it might break the audience's trust in the fictional narrative as a whole. It looks right. clean and pretty and simple. Drop in this one trope and you can do anything in the story. Bring back the dead, introduce characters from totally different times and settings, do full episode Alice in Wonderland homages, write in all kinds of fantastical surreal scenarios without having to do the world building heavy lifting to actually make them internally coherent. But if you're not careful, it erodes the foundations of the story. And almost no other trope has that effect. There are plenty of unpopular tropes that can disappoint an audience, but almost none of them attack the audience's basic ability to suspend their disbelief. Not even breaking the fourth wall can break an audience's trust in the narrative. But the right. basic fundamental premise of All a Dream is that the story cannot be trusted. Plenty of narratives break the audience's trust in little ways. Mysteries will omit key details to preserve tension, plot twists startle the audience by being unexpected, but this trope doesn't just tweak the audience's perspective on the story, it calls the whole fictional reality into question if the writer isn't careful. Which There's is a reason why most sucks. of the well-liked versions of this trope are either ambiguous about how unreal the dream was, or purposefully subverting the expectations of the trope by confirming it actually was real. Audiences do not like being jarringly pulled out of the story to be reminded that fiction isn't real. So that's why it's our least favorite trope. Red just laid it out. I like that she was like pretty ambiguous about it. Like she talked about like why audiences don't like it, but she was she wasn't like it's trash, it's garbage. I mean, because that's definitely how I would approach this stuff. This is a bad trope. Don't ever ooh, do it. That clap was so loud. Uh, writers who do it are garbage and lazy. And that's like that would be me. She was just like, this is how it's done. This is how it can be done well. This is how it can actually add to the storyline. Cause definitely when the video started, I was like, it's never good. It's not good. And then as she continued, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, like, yeah, that in that example, it's, okay, in that example, it's good. Oh, okay, look, in these, ex okay. So like, I had to kind of like chill and be like, okay, sometimes it's okay. And that's good that you can learn how to do that. You know, obviously it's good sometimes is why people use it. You know what I mean? But like in general, if you tell me a story has it, I am less inclined to watch it regardless. Agreed. Like when you watch The Matrix and if you focus on the part that the beginning part was a dream mm -hmm. and that's what you're going to tell me about it, I'm like, yeah, I probably would never watch it. In The Matrix, one of the greatest films ever created. Right. Easily, you know? But it's the interplay with it. And the greatest of it holds up the trope. And it also shows you how shitty the bad ones are. Right. And like, we like the Matrix because that's how you're supposed to use tropes. You're supposed to use it to kind of compare the different parts of the story to each other. Yeah. And show how the story is moving and flowing and how characters are interacting with this information. And show new and interesting ways to think about either the world that you're in or the world that you're reading. Right? Exactly. Like, it's supposed to immerse you more. And the bad examples that she's talking about are the ones that violate that because they're being lazy. They're using a trope to be lazy. Right. I think mm -hmm. the story has to carry the trope. The trope right. cannot carry the story. Exactly. Yeah. And that is a classic writer's problem where you want to write something that's relatable to readers and you yeah. want to write something that people can read and enjoy. And you might be inspired by things that you can understand. You know, like we talk about Dragon Ball Z as an anime and how it inspires a lot of other anime. Right. But the complete ripoffs are always really garbage because they don't know what to do. They don't know what to talk about. Yeah. They just talk about the trope over and over again. Exactly. And that's just, that's not fun. You know, that's not fun in any style of media. But especially in writing, you get really exposed because you end up having to write really basic sentences like, and it was all the, like, if you ever write that, like, you shouldn't have to say that. You know what she I mean? She woke with a gasp. Oh my God. You're struggling. Sweat streaming down her face. Of course it is. And what time of day is it, love? 
cold and clammy. Her <laughs> night shift sticks to her heaving bosom. Okay, maybe I'm getting into the inappropriate right. trope there. And now they just had sex. She's so <laughs> sticky. They just like... <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Oh no, we're done. No, you're done. I hope you guys Where enjoyed. Where my pantaloons? Stop. Gasp! Stop. They're missing. Nobody wears pantaloons. <laughs> you be reading them old ass sex scenes. They still don't wear pantaloons. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks I for stopping you... by. That was so rude. I didn't know you were gonna take over my outro. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. Cheers. Um, don't forget to talk about how handsome my husband is. You could do that. Yeah, talk about that. Talk about how fluffy his beard when is. you wake up 20 years from now and our marriage was all a dream and you get to start over. 20 years from now? How fantastic would that I'll be? I'll be so old. Man. I'll be almost like 50. Yeah, and we get to start over while you're old. That sounds terrible. Cute wedding idea, get married, get a tattoo of an anime character while they're young, and then type, it was all a dream, and then tattoo them old. Peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's skittin' lit. That's cute.